Hi guys, so my seminar is on the male reproductive system. So to begin with, the purpose of the human reproductive systems is to unite a single reproductive cell from a male parent. Both male and female reproductive systems include a pair of gonads, and the gonads, which are testes, is an organ that produces reproductive cells, such as sperm. The male reproductive cells are called gametes. Sex hormones, which are the chemical compounds that control the development and function of the reproductive system. So here are just three key terms that are important in this section. So first, we have gonads in males, so it's an organ that produces reproductive cells, which are called gametes, and the testes produces sperm. Gametes is a reproductive sex cell, so in males it's called sperm, in females it's called eggs. And then lastly, sex hormone, one of several chemical compounds that control the development and function of the reproductive system or secondary sex characteristics. So most of the male reproductive system is lo located outside of the body, such as the scrotum, penis, ep epididymis, and testes, and then internal organs called accessory organs include vas deferens, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and the bulbourethral glands. <clears throat> um, also includes gonads, which produces sperm, hormones, and accessory glands. <laughs> The following image, images show the structure of the male reproductive system, so to the right, um, so sperm begins in the testes and exits the male body through the penis, and the testes and the penis are located outside of the body. So now we're going to look at the actual structure of the male reproductive system and their functions. So first we have the testes. So <clears throat> testes, or I mean Gonads are called testes. Two male gonads is equal to testes. And they're held, held outside of the body in a sack of skin called the scrotum. The scrotum regulates the temperature of the testes. And they are composed of highly coiled tubes called seminiferous tubules and hormone secreting cells called interstitial cells. So I just wanted to show you the anatomy of a testes. So if you look at um, the area of SG, here, um, they are, these are called Sertoli cells, and Sertoli cells help in the process of sperm spermatogenesis, and this will be discussed later in the presentation as it relates to horm hormonal regulation, but speci specifically, it is a process for the development of sperm or sperm production to be continuous and plentiful. LS are, um, is interstitial cells. And they produce androgens or t the, t the testosterone hormone. And IC is just the surrounding connective tissue. Okay, so to repeat again, interstitial cells secrete the male hormone testosterone. And the seminiferous tubules are where sperm are produced. Latex cells or in interstitial cells um, produce hormones such as um, testosterone and they are scattered between the tubules. Production of normal sperm cannot occur at normal body temperatures, which I think is around like 37 degrees. Testosterone promotes sperm formation and development of the male secondary sex characteristics. And these character sexual characteristics will be discussed later and what they are um, for the puberty part. Okay, so here we have the penis, and it is the male organ for sexual in intercourse and urination, and its primary function is to transfer sperm from the male to the female reproductive tract. So the penis has a var variable length shaft with an enlarged tip called the glans penis, as you can see in the picture beside it. That's where the glans penis is. Um... And there's a sheath of skin called the foreskin that surrounds and protects the gland's penis. So it has three cylinders of spongy erectile tissue. And these tissues fill with blood from the arteries, which causes an erection during sexual arousal. Increased blood flow to the erectile tissues causes the penis to expand. 
So now we're looking at the structures and functions of the penis. So we have first, we have the ureter, which carries urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder stores urine, allowing urination to be infrequent and controlled. Urethra carries fluids from fluids through the penis. And here I just have it highlighted so you can see it more clearly because there's so much um, structures, structures in the male reproductive system. And then here we have um, ductus deferens, which carry ejaculatory sperm out of the epidermis, and then seminal vesicles adds fluids to sperm cells to make semen, and semen is primarily made up of the fluids secreted by this vesicle. So it's here and here. Prostate gland secretes prostate fluid. The muscles of the prostate gland also help propel seminal fluid into the urethra during ejaculation, and Cowper's gland produces thick, clear mucus. It's also a component of semen. So here's the prostate gland, and then here's the Cowper's gland. Ejaculatory, ejaculatory duct mixes a sperm stored in the ampulla with fluid secreted by the seminal vesicles, then transports these substances to the prostate. Epididymis stores and moves sperm cells that are produced in the testes, also causes sperm cells to mature. So epididymis is located here. Um, ejaculatory duct is right over here. Here's just the front view of the male reproductive system. So here's the seminal vesicle, which is behind the bladder. You have the urethra, the scrotum, urinary bladder, prostate um, gland, bulbourethral gland, rectal tissue, vas deferens, epididymis, and the testes. So ducts, so testes ducts, which include the seminiferous tubules and vas deferens, are involved in the creation or transportation of sperm. So more specifically, sperm pass into coiled tubules called the epididymis from the seminiferous tubules of the testes. During ejaculation, sperm moves through the muscular vas deferens and the ejaculatory duct. From the ejaculatory duct, sperm exits the penis through the urethra. Accessory glands. So, the accessory sex glands produce seminal fluid and clean and lubricate the urethra. So, semen consists of sperm and secretions from three sets of accessory glands. The two seminal vesicles provide about 60% of the total volume of semen. The prostate gland secretes prostate fluid into the urethra through several small ducts. The bourethral bul glands secrete a clear mucus before ejaculation that neutralized acidic urine remaining in the urethra. Seminal fluid, also called uh, semen, is produced from the male reproductive tract and contains sperm cells which are capable of fertilizing the female eggs. When sperm cells pass through the ductus differentia, they are mixed with fluid secreted through three glands, the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and Cowper's gland. So when sexual arousal continues, semen enters the urethra from the ductus deferens. The movement of semen is a result of a series of interactions by three nervous systems. And here is just an overview of um, sperm production from production to ejaculation. And you guys can get this feedback. So here are the three um, nervous systems. Sorry. Three nervous systems. So the sympathetic system is a flash flood of hormones, boosts the body's alertness and heart rate, sending extra blood to the muscles. You have parasympathetic, conserves energy as it slows the heart rate, increases inst intestinal and gland activity. Somatic consists of afferent nerves or motor nerves. And here is a picture. So the parasympathetic nerves, they promote erection of genitals. Here's a video of the male reproductive system, so their functions, organs, and anatomy, so like what I just talked about.
hormones. Okay. So we're gonna in this section we're gonna talk about like sperm to genesis, the production of sperm, some key sex hormones involved, such as before puberty and during puberty. So human rep reproduction is organized by hormones from the hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, and gonads. Sex hormones serve many functions such as gamete production, sexual behavior, and the development of primary and secondary sex characteristics. So let's look at some important sex hormones. So gonad gonadotropin, GNRH, is a releasing hormone that acts on the anterior pituitary gland to cause it to release two different sex hormones, which are the luteinizing hormone, LH, and the follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH. So FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, is a reproductive hormone or tropic hormone. So what is a tropic hormone? It regulates the function of endocrine cells or glands, not a result of a particular action. So this stimulates the development of sex organs and gamete production in males and females. <laughs> then we have luteinizing hormone, LH. It's also a reproductive and tropic hormone that stimulates the formation of the corpus luteum. Well, it, simula it simulates the formation of this um, only for the female reproductive system. But in male reproductive system, um, LH causes the release of testosterone in the testes. And then here we have sex hormone, I mean, inhibin hormone. This hormone acts on the anterior pituitary, again, to inhibit, but it inhibits the production of FSH, and it produces a negative feedback loop that controls the rate of sperm formation. This is, um, this is a diagram of the negative feedback loop, which um, is um, involved for like the hormonal regulation of the male reproductive system that I'll discuss later in the presentation. Testosterone, so another reproductive hormone that stimulates the development of the male reproductive tract and secondary sex characteristics. Here's another video of the male sex hormones such as LH, FSH, um, G and RH, inhibin, and it just sort of summarizes it in this video. Okay, so um, hormones before birth. So in embryos that are genetically male, the Y chromosome carries a gene called the testes determining factor, or TDF. So TDF triggers the production of the male sex hormone. Um, so here, um, so this photo describes sexual differentiation and sex determination between males and females. Sex determination occurs at the moment of conception. So the embryo either, receive, either receives two X chromosomes, so that would be a female embryo, or an X and Y chromosome, which is a male embryo from parents. So if the developing embryo has a Y chromosome, this chromosome contains the sex determining region of the Y chromosome called um, SY. SRY gene. So the SRY gene encodes for a protein known as the testes determining factor, which differ differ differentiates the gonads into a testes early in development. Later, the testes begin to secrete hormone, secretes the hormone testosterone and DHT, which is called uh, dihydrotestosterone, which help differ differentiate the body and the brain into a more male phenotype. So the presence of androgens facilitates the development of male sex organs and ducts in the fetus. As the reproductive structures develop, they begin to migrate to the final location. For example, testes develop in the abdominal cavity during the third fetal month. The testes begin to descend to the sporum. Now let's talk about puberty. So puberty is a peri period in which the reproductive system completes its development and becomes fully functional. Um, so it's also a series of hormonal events that lead to slow physical changes, which include the development of sex organs and se secondary sex characteristics. 
and um, puberty begins all starts around 10 to 13 years old and it begins when the hypothalamus increases its production of GnRH hormone, reproductive hormone. And here is just a photo of what um, like the symptoms of puberty. So you have acne, facial hair, voice change, breast growth, mood swings, genital growth. And you can see here that testosterone promotes the stimulation of growth and development of male sexual characteristics. Okay, so um, so here are just three key, I mean, no, one, two, three, uh, four key hormones that are involved during puberty. So you have GnRH that will act on the anterior pituitary gland, causing to release two different sex hormones, FSH and LH. And then FSH and LH causes the testes to begin producing sperm and release testosterone. And then testosterone will act on many tissues to complete the development of sex organs and sexual characteristics. Moving on to the hormone reg hormonal regulation of the male reproductive system, hormone feedback mechanisms. Um, so, horm sorry, hormone feedback mechanisms control the process of sperm production and man maintain secondary sexual characteristics. And we discussed these characteristics on the previous slide about puberty. So here, um, FSH promotes the activity of Sertoli cells, and Sertoli cells, remember, they nourish, develop, and sperm. LH regulates Leydig cells, which secrete testosterone and other androgens, which in turn promotes sperm to genesis. And testosterone regulates the production of GnRH, FSH, and LH through negative feedback loop mechanisms. The picture I provide here is an example of a negative feedback loop mechanism. And then Sertoli cells secrete the hormone inhibin, which reduces FSH secretion from anterior pituitary. Um, these, these sound really like confusing right now, but at the end of this seminar, I have a chart that provides all the hormones and their key... Um, their key, um, like where they act on, and their function. Okay, so, um, okay, so gametogenesis. So, what is gametogenesis, and where does it occur? So, cells need to develop before they become mature gametes capable of fertilization. And recall, gametes are reproductive sex cells, which are sperm and males. The development of haploid cells into gametes is called gametogenesis. In males, for example, the process that produces mature sperm called mature sperm cells is called spermatogenesis. So yeah, so here spermatogenesis is a development of sperm is continuous and plentiful. Um <clears throat> so sperm Definitely, so why it needs to be continuous and plentiful because more sperm definitely means better chances of fertilization. So millions of sperm are produced in which um, they take, so in which each sperm takes about seven weeks to develop. And this process, uh, this process occurs throughout adolescence and adulthood. So let's look at this diagram very briefly. So spermatogenic Jonium are the initial pool of diploid cells that divide by mitosis to give two identical cells. One of these cells will be used to replenish the pool of spermatogonia, um, and these cells are called A1 spermatogonia. The replenishment of spermatogonia means that males, and males are fertile throughout their adult life. The other cell, type B spermatogonium, will eventually form mature sperm. Okay, so type B spermatogonia replicate by, by, by mitosis several times to form identical diploid cells. These cells are now known as primary sperm spermatocytes. So primary spermatocytes right here. And 
um, and they undergo and they undergo meiosis. So meiosis one produces two haploid cells known as secondary spermatocytes, and then meiosis two produces four haploid cells known as spermatids. And then eventually it'll turn into a sperm cell. Here's just a structure of a sperm. So you have, they have a nucleus, they have a mitochondria, a neck, head, midpiece, tail. This is a plasma membrane, and then the acrosome. Okay, so finally the negative feedback loop. So let's refer to this image as I speak. So recall that G and RH from the hypothalamus triggers the release of FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary gland. FSH causes the semi ferrous tubules in the testes to produce LH from the anterior pituitary gland. FSH then causes cells in the semi ferrous tubules to release a hormone called inhibin. Inhibin acts on the anterior pituitary gland to inhibit the production of FSH. So as FSH levels drop, this decreases inhibin in the testes and the decrease of inhibin increase FSH in the anterior pituitary. This is called a negative feedback loop and it maintains the level of sperm production over time. Um, so here's just another picture, um, but this is from the AP textbook. So to reiterate, the hypothalamus causes the release of FSH and LH into the male system for the first time. FSH enters the testes and stimulates the Sertoli cells to begin facilitating sperm atogenesis using negative feedback. LH also enters the testes and stimulates interstitial cells or Leydig cells to make and release testosterone into the testes and the blood. Leydig cells, testosterone. And recall testosterone, the hormone responsible for the secondary sexual characteristics that develop in the male during adolescence, stimulates sperm matugenesis. Yeah, so like right here. These secondary sex characteristics include the deepening of the voice, the growth of the facial, pubic hair, and the beginning of sex drive. So um, so here's another negative feedback loop. So this feedback loop maintains the secondary sex characteristics. So LH causes the interstitial cells in the testes to secrete testosterone. Testosterone promotes muscle development and the formation of facial hair. Testosterone acts on the anterior pituitary to inhibit the release of LH, and this feedback loop maintains the testosterone levels constant in the body. So a negative feedback system really occurs with rising levels of testosterone acting on the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary to inhibit the release of GNHR, GNRH, FSH, and LH. The Sertoli cells produce the hormone inhibin, which is released into the blood when the sperm count is too high. This inhibits the release of GNRH and FSH, which will cause sperm metugenesis to slow down. If the sperm count reaches to roughly around 20 million, the Sertoli cells cease the release, um, I mean release, um, in, cease, uh, sorry, inhibit the release of inhibin and the sperm count increases. So here's uh, like a 10 minute video of what I just explained, so the negative feedback loops if you didn't understand it, or um, you can also read it from the textbook, but here's just like a good video where he explains everything. Okay, so here's just a summary of the key reproductive hormones and their function. Um, you have GNRH, FSH, LH, inhibit, and testosterone, and um, the target organs the function and all the production sites. Yes. Alright, so lastly let's talk about um, andropause. So what is andropause? So it is a condition in which a male cannot produce enough testosterone. And this plays, a, so we know that obviously testosterone plays a crucial role in a male's sex drive, muscle mass, as well as mental and physical and um, energy. Here's uh, a picture 
uh, the symptoms and complications, so it's an overview of it. So you can even see like thinning hair, hair loss, reduced muscle mass, increased fat mass, um, reduction in bone mass, osteoporosis risk. So what causes andropause? So um, a specific cause for testosterone deficiency is excess secretion of one or more pituitary hormones, which then sorry, which then interferes with testosterone production. As men get older, the level of testosterone in the body gradually becomes lower. It is estimated that testosterone decreases about 10% every decade after men reach the age of 30. Okay, so as men age, not only does the body start making less testosterone, but also the levels of another hormone, call, hormone called sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG, which pulls usable testosterone from the blood. Um, SHBG binds some of the available testosterone circulating in the blood, and the testosterone that is not bound to the SHBG hormone is called bioavailable testosterone, meaning it is available for use by the body. Men who experience um, men who experience symptoms associated with andropause have lowered amounts of bioavailable testosterone in their blood. Therefore, tissues in the body that are stimulated by testosterone receive a lower amount of it, which may cause various physical and possible, possibly mental uh, changes in a person, such as mood swings or fatigue. Again, some symptoms and complications. So, difficulty obtaining or maintaining erection, um, poor results from exercise programs, loss of bone density, loss of lean body ma uh, muscle mass, poor work performance, uh, increased body fat, difficulty concentrating, um, and then complications associated with andropause include increased risk of cardiovascular problems and osteoporosis, which means high risk of bone fractures. So your bones are very fragile. So here's um, the benefits of optimal testosterone. So you can see that you, they're happy, increased muscle mass, basically everything opposite to what I just explained right here. And yeah. So in conclusion, reproductive function and secondary sex characteristics both depend on the continued presence of male sex hormones. Sex hormones work to stimulate the development of male reproductive systems and regulate the function of the mature reproductive system. In males, the main sex hormone is testosterone. And then finally, a negative feedback hormone system maintains a relatively constant level of sperm production and testosterone levels in the body. Thanks for listening, and uh, you can refer to the textbook pages from 414 to 425 if you want to read this topic um, in the textbook.